What's going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Michael and welcome to Fudge Muppet. Today I've got a Fallout 76 guide on how to get a bunch of unique gear obtained by fulfilling a series of side quests in a plot that unravels the mysteries of a secret order, the Order of Mistresses of Mystery. This side quest is actually my favorite side quest I've played out of my current time in Fallout 76 and definitely was better than anything I've done in the main storyline so far. You really feel like you've discovered a secret superhero faction with a secret entrance and a whole underground base. It reminds me a lot of the Silver Shroud storyline of Fallout 4 and there's a solid amount of lore in there too but I don't want to spoil it all in this video. Instead I want to tell you concisely how to complete the quest, how to get the sensational gear and all about what each item is. Remember to subscribe if you want to get more Fallout 76 unique gear guides and also guides on perk cards and build related stuff. We'll also be making some more critical videos too about how aspects of the game could have been executed much better so stay tuned for that. That said, what gear are you going to be getting? Well, there's a phantom device, which is kind of like a unique stealth boy. There's the Garb of Mysteries, which is a unique feminine outfit. The Eye of Ra, which is a unique jewel brooch that enhances the Garb of Mysteries. There's the Voice of Set, which is a legendary 44 pistol, and the Blade of Bastet, a legendary Chinese officer's sword. Now keep in mind, I call those last two items legendary weapons because they have unique effects, but strangely, they don't have the legendary star symbol next to them like randomly found legendary gear does. Let's quickly run through the weapons and their stats and then I'll explain the more interesting unique items here. The Garb of Mystery, Eye of Ra and the Phantom Device. Okay, so the voice of Set. This is a 44 pistol with a reflex sight, which you can't use until you're level 25. It does 60 damage, but then additional electric damage against robots. Obviously uses 44 ammo. It has a fire rate of six, a range of 84 with 68 accuracy and a value of 126. All in all, this is actually a useful gun simply for the effect of doing more damage against robots. And if you haven't noticed, there's a lot of damn robots on the map in Fallout 76. It really helps when you're just tearing down Protectrons, Mr handies and wall mounted turrets. Obviously, if you ever run into a hostile sentry bot, which I sadly have done at a very low level, then this gun will definitely be of use. Pretty straightforward stuff here, as is the Blade of Bastet, which you'll also have to be level 25 to use. Also, I just want to mention that many of these items require you to be level 25 to use, but you can easily do the quest at level 20 or around that depending on how you play. On Scott's character with 5 strength and no melee perk cards, this Chinese officer Officer's sword did 53 damage. It has a weight of 3 and a value of 65 and swings with medium speed. The special effect is that it delivers increased armor penetration. So if you're a melee character, this is useful for any enemies you're trying to kill that have high resistances, of which there are plenty. Personally, I'd love to shove this through a rad scorpion's head. But those two weapons aside, let's talk about the real special stuff, like the phantom device. So the phantom device is a special aid item, which frenzies nearby creatures and renders you almost completely invisible. It has a weight of 1 and a value of 100. You'll get one of these for completing the quest I'm going to walk you through, but you also unlock the ability to craft more of them at a tinkerer's workbench, although the requirements aren't super easy to come by. They include one adhesive and one copper, which is easy, but then one stealth boy and one hallucinogen gas canister. It makes sense though, as it would be pretty overpowered if you could just craft up 20 of these things and use them all the time. Anyway, so when you activate it, it lets you go invisible like a stealth boy, and it has a really cool visual effect, as you'll see in the video, of surrounding you in a black smoke screen. Anyways, you can see how this item would be used. Slip through some enemy creatures and activate it, making you feel like a badass phantom as you disappear through the smog, and the creatures tear each other apart while you remain hidden. Then there's a unique outfit for the Order of Mysteries called the Garb of Mysteries, which you also need to be level 25 to wear. Besides looking really cool, it actually grants plus one perception, makes you 5% harder to detect while sneaking, and has 15 damage and energy resistance. So you can't wear it over your armor because it kind of is armor. It has a weight of one and a value of 41. Now it actually gets powered up by the unique brooch you receive when you finish the quest line known as the Eye of Ra. You can only wear the Eye of Ra if you're wearing the Garb of Mysteries, and it enhances the garb not only aesthetically, but by making you 20% harder to detect while sneaking. You still 
just get plus one to perception and you get a bonus plus 20 damage resistance. Obviously this bonus plus 20 disappears if you're not wearing the jewel and you're also only 5% harder to detect while sneaking instead of 20%. They're definitely a powerful combo to wear together and the aesthetic is pretty neat for any female character you're playing. When you put the Eye of Ra on, you won't notice a difference in stats when viewing the Garb of Mysteries in your Pip-Boy. So to discover the effect that I explained, you need to go to look in the stat section of your Pip-Boy and then go to effects. The Eye of Ra has a value of 100 and a weight of 0.1. The effect appropriately reads, enhances the Mistress of Mysteries regalia. You'll notice all of these items really form part of you being this Mistress of Mysteries superhero, donning your dress and spectacular amulet, fortifying your stealth and resistances, disappearing into a smoke screen which frenzies the creatures around you using a special gadget only to come out and show off your skill with a blade, decapitating your foes before you gunsling a round of bullets into surrounding enemies' heads. So now you've seen what all this special gear looks like and you know what it does, how do we begin this quest line and discover the secret base of the Order of Mysteries? Well, the way we started the quest, and by we I mean Scott and myself, was at the Charleston train yard. However, I have seen that you can start this quest in other locations in the game where you can find the same situation, a dead body in a tattered dress labeled Young Woman. So Charleston Train Yard, where we found our corpse, is located pretty much directly south of Vault 76. You could just walk ages from Vault 76 all the way down to this fork in the water, discovering the location as shown here on the map. Anyways, you can see where the body was in our playthrough, hanging over the railing, and Scott also had a miscellaneous objective when he went near the body anyway, saying, search the body. Notably on the corpse, you will be able to get a quest item called a Worn Veil. And then you can pick up a damaged holotape from her body too, which you'll want to listen to. Through a bunch of static, you hear a woman talking about the Order and raiders are closing in and you can make out, she says, Riverside Manor. You get the first quest in this plotline called Into the Mystery and you're told to learn the history of Riverside Manor. So off you go to investigate. Riverside Manor is located southeast of Charleston Train Yard and you can see its map location here. That said, the map marker points are going to be given to you personally as you play the quest, so you won't really need to focus on the map that much. Anyways, you'll notice every time you head into Riverside Manor, it's filled with Scorched, but they're pretty low level, but it can get annoying. So when you walk in, you can run upstairs to the map markers and look at the terminal, read all the entries, and your objective will change to search the front parlor while wearing a veil. However, it seems if you just head into this place, which is just into the room on your left when you first walk in and then you go over to the left corner while you're wearing the worn veil it will open up the secret door and you can head on through then the objective says discover the secret of riverside manor and going down the stairs you end up opening another secret door revealing a full-on underground base with a massive computer setup in the middle called cryptos but there's no ethereum here finding this base will complete the first quest in the series of quests into the mystery the next quest will then begin called initiate of mysteries your first objective Objective will be to register as an initiate. So head to the big computer terminal in the middle and press new initiate registration. Log in as unknown user and then you'll get the objective to listen to the initiate holotape. You'll also have the miscellaneous objective of repairing your worn veil using the fabricator. The fabricator can be found in the base if you just follow the map marker. Just go to the terminal and select fabrication services and then initiate veil of secrets. The fabricator is used by the order to create their gear and it's hooked up to cryptos so it knows what gear each member is permitted to make. After repairing the veil, the worn veil will be removed and replaced by the veil of secrets, which is purely aesthetic. Now I won't have time to explain every terminal entry in this video, but one cool thing to note is that cryptos is a genuine Robco mainframe, custom built for some top secret DIA project before the war. The government pulled the contract and then cryptos was sold off for cheap and then eventually ended up being used by the Order of Mysteries. Anyways, find the initiate holotape in your Pip Boy and listen to it, you'll then need to go to the Crypto's terminals and select database queries, then select initiate mentor assignment. Your objective will then say meet your mentor in Lewisburg. Lewisburg is found more or less south of Riverside Manor, as you can see on the map. When you arrive, you'll find that Lewisburg is filled with super mutants, some of which are actually high level and pretty tough. For example, you'll see level 16s, but then a level 28 enforcer will just walk out and they often love to just throw grenades or shoot you point blank with a missile launcher. We were running the quest with characters around level 20 by the way. Anyways, behind the stalls with pot plants and birdhouses, you'll 
you'll find a gap leading you behind them to your mentor, Natasha Hunt, obviously very dead, next to a vending machine. You'll want to take her login details and her holotape. This will give you two new objectives. Report back to cryptos and the optional one, search for signs of raider activity. Simply follow the stair pathways up onto the roofs and keep walking across them all, making your way to a taller rooftop with dead raiders and a dead sniper named Kerry with a quest item on the body called Kerry's Orders. Take this from the body and the optional objective will be complete. Then travel back to Riverside Manor and open the cryptos terminal. Log in in as Mistress Natasha Hunt and then select Administrative Actions, then press Authorized Promotion and then select Authorized Promotion Novice of Mysteries and then press Unknown User. Then go out of Natasha Hunt's login and log in as Unknown User aka you. This will allow you to claim your promotion. You are now a Novice of Mysteries and as a result you're given the Novice Holotape to listen to and you're authorized to have the Fabricator dispense the garb of mysteries for you. After exiting the terminal, the Initiate of Mysteries quest will be complete. We were given some diluted stim packs and some 10 mil ammo in addition to XP and caps. And then the new quest begins titled Novice of Mysteries. This quest is all about mastering the tools of the Mistress of Mystery. You'll also have the miscellaneous objective to claim the garb of mysteries from the Fabricator. So go to the Fabricator, select Fabrication Services, and then Novice Garb of Mysteries. So that's one of the unique items obtained. But remember, you can't wear it until you're level 25, and you won't want to wear it unless you've also got the jewel, the Eye of Ra, which makes the garb much more powerful. Anyways, listen to the Order of Mysteries rank novice holotape and you'll get the following objectives. Master the tools of the Mistress of Mystery, earn the Phantom Device, earn the Blade of Bastet, and earn the Voice of Set. So go to the Crypto's Terminal, log in as Unknown User, and then select Mission Board. Click all of the available missions. You may as well go out into the Wasteland and do as many objectives as you can instead of doing them separately which is why we just put all of this gear into the one video guide. So press Novice Phantom Device, Novice the Blade of Bastet, and Novice the Voice of Set. So Novice of Mysteries is the overarching quest here, and you get these three other quests within this quest, one for each item. They're called Chasing Shadows, which is for the Phantom Device, Prototypical Problems, which is for the Voice of Set, and Forging a Legend, which is for the Blade of Bastet. Each one has a corresponding holotape, and listening to these is what you'll be doing as the first objective of each of these three quests. Each holotape talks about the weapons and techniques that a Mistress of Mystery uses. After listening to each one, all three of the quests will require you to obtain information from the Crypto's Terminal, so it's best if you don't leave the base before listening to the holotapes like we did, because then you have to go back to the Crypto's Terminal anyway. So listen to the holotapes as soon as you get them. Your objective for the Phantom Device quest is simply to search Cryptos for Phantom Device components. For the voice of set quest, it's search cryptos for experimental weapons research, and for the Blade of Bastet one, it's search cryptos for historic sword, but it's also get a swing analyzer from the fabricator. So go into the cryptos terminal, logging in as unknown user, and selecting database queries, press on all three options here, novice phantom device components, historic swords, and weapons research. Then you should head to that fabricator and create the swing analyzer. You'll see the option to create the three quest related weapons, but if you click them, it'll say error, as you haven't done the quests and you don't have the right materials yet. Anyways, create the swing analyzer. You're going to need to attach it to the historic sword once you obtain one in order to track the data of your blade skills in combat. Anyways, now your objectives for all three quests will be to find a stealth boy and hallucinogen gas for the phantom device, to find a historic sword for the blade of Bastet, and to locate the EMP research program for the voice of Set. Now we actually did the objectives in a pretty disjointed order, simply going to whatever was closest to us on the map and I recommend doing this too as you'll be doing everything at once and you'll want to be efficient getting it all done as fast as possible. Obviously you can do them all separately if it feels cleaner to you but anyways bear with me here as we hop between quest objectives. So the first objective we did was finding the historic sword and there could be a chance the location you can get it from might be randomized but in our playthrough we were sent near the White Spring Golf Club located northeast of Riverside Manor. We went into this building and the sword was locked in a display 
case, we had to access the presidential cottage and museum terminal. It needed a password though, so we had to head upstairs and go into one of the bathrooms. The password was found on the floor next to a skeleton chilling out in the shower. After getting the password, you just go to the terminal and use it to open the display case. Then you'll be able to take the Chinese officer's sword. It is named Grant's Saber, but apart from that, it's not particularly interesting. You can then attach a swing analyzer to it at any weapons workbench. Anyways, instead of doing that right away, we actually just took the sword and went and picked up the stealth boy next for the phantom device, which was located at North Cutthroat Camp for us, located east of Pleasant Valley Cabins. Although this location could definitely be randomized, as stealth boys aren't a unique item at all, the stealth boy was located in a locked footlocker, but you could lockpick it with zero lockpicking perk cards. After getting it, we trekked all the way to Sugar Grove, a location to the southeast of where we were, in order to complete the EMP research objective for the voice of set quest. Arriving here, we had to fight through robots before heading inside the facility. We had to make our way through the facility, through a bunch of different rooms and hallways, and robots of course, until we came to a more important looking room with a terminal in it. You'll want to access the advanced research terminal and select research projects. Then select the one that says EX72 Pulsar EMP weapons development. Then click research data and then download project data. This will complete the objective for locating the EMP research program and replace it with a new objective, get a project siphon holotape. So follow the map marker, heading through the facility until you open the door to the room with the analyst's terminal. Access it and select Project Siphon and then dispense Project Siphon Holotape. This will add the holotape to your inventory and you'll get the new objective. Use the Project Siphon Holotape to extract the data. You'll want to go back to the advanced research terminal you were at very recently in the other room. Access the terminal and load the Project Siphon Holotape onto it. Then go back to the main menu of the terminal and press Play Holotape. Then hit Download Data. Now you've extracted the data, all you need to do is upload it to the fabric back at the base. But let's finish the other objectives before heading back. One convenient thing we noticed was that there was a weapons workbench in this very room with the terminal, so we used it to attach the swing analyzer to Grant's saber before we left. You'll then get an objective for that saying kill different types of creatures with Grant's saber, 0 out of 6. So as we continue to complete objectives, you may as well have the sword ready to kill things with. So after this we left to go and get the hallucinogen gas, which is rare but like a stealth boy it's not a unique item, so where we were sent to get it might also be a randomized location. Ours was located south of Lewisburg Station and was at the Garahan Mining Headquarters. So heading into the building, we went down onto the floor and into the door labeled Garahan Mining Atrium. The place is filled with mole miners, so be careful. After killing the enemies, we headed on through into a room with a safe, and in the safe was a hallucinogen gas canister. After finding this, the objective for the Phantom Quest simply becomes use the fabricator to make a phantom device. So pretty much we can now get the phantom device and the voice of Set from the fabricator. All we have left to do is kill the six creatures with Grant Saber while the swing analyzer we've attached gathers data. You could do this before heading back, but if I'm being honest, we got impatient trying to find six different creatures. So we actually just went back to the fabricator in our playthrough, selected fabrication services and hit phantom device. When you select phantom device, the stealth boy and hallucinogen gas canister are removed from your inventory and you gain a phantom device and also the ability to craft more phantom devices. Now for the voice of set, you'll first have to load in the project siphon holotape and then press play holotape, then select upload data and after doing this you can go to fabrication services and select voice of set, giving you the gun. Because you're completing separate quests for each item, you'll also receive the random rewards of stim packs and things like that on top of the special gear and obviously XP. Now as for killing six different types of creatures, I'll leave that up to you. Just go around the wasteland killing different categories of things. We killed a mole rat which was classified as a rodent, an opossum which counted as a small animal, a feral ghoul, a myalurk which honestly was killed with Scott's missile launcher but then he switched to Grant's saber afterwards and it counted as a sword kill, a wild mongrel which was classified as a canine, and a tick which counted as killing a bug. Anyways, after killing the six creatures 
is your objective will become, use the Fabricator to make the Blade of Bastet. So head back to Riverside Manor, go into the secret base and go to the Fabricator, create the Blade of Bastet, earning you the item itself and completing the quest. Now what is interesting is that our work here is not done. We still need to go to the Crypto's Terminal to complete the overarching quest that ties it all together, Novice of Mysteries. Your objective will say log in to claim your promotion. So log in as unknown user and you'll be told that you are now a Seeker of Mysteries. As a Seeker, you will work to perfect your skills as you prepare for your final test and full acceptance into the order. Press continue and then open the mission board section and select the mission titled Mistress Pleasant Valley Infiltration. So you'll have two holotapes to listen to now, the Seeker holotape and the Pleasant Valley mission holotape. You'll get XP, caps and some goods for finishing the Novice of Mysteries quest, which is now replaced with the Seeker of Mysteries quest. The subtitle under the quest name when it pops up says, complete a mission worthy of the Mistress of Mystery. So listen to both of the holotapes and your objective will become infiltrate Pleasant Valley Ski Resort. You're going into what was a Raider stronghold and if you've been doing the main story of Fallout 76, you've probably been very close to this location already and likely even visited it. So once you arrive, your objective will be completed and will then change to search for information about the Order of Mysteries. There's more miners all over this place, although they're not too high level, so it should be easy enough if you're around level 20 like we were. There's a ton of map markers to investigate, but when you come here yourself, you'll easily be able to see where we are by looking at this video. You'll want to pick up the note upstairs in this building labeled Tony's Orders on this table, which explains that someone called Brody said his girl came through and he has the tape. It's in his room and it can help them finally put a stop to this order of mysteries. Your objective then becomes locate Brody's room and you can simply head straight to the map marker. We jumped on the balcony to get inside and there's a footlocker with a Pleasant Valley intranet memo inside of it pick it up. You'll get an optional objective for finding the password for Brody's terminal. Now I don't know exactly why you need to do this, but I'll tell you how to do it either way. So to get this, just go to the building the map marker directs you to, head inside and run up the piece of broken roofing, following the path on screen to the Pleasant Valley Network Administration Terminal. Select Network Administration and then press Reset User Passwords, picking Brody Torrance. You then get Brody's password. Anyways, let's get back to Brody's terminal now, which didn't seem to need a password. Select Mount Holotape Drive and then dispense Siphon Holotape. You then receive Mistress Olivia Rivers login and the Order of Mysteries Cryptos Holotape. You will now have completed the Seeker of Mysteries quest and should head back to Riverside Manor. Now begins the quest, the Mistress of Mystery. Learn the fate of the Order of Mysteries. Your first objective is gaining access to the Headmistress's office. So go to the Cryptos Terminal, log in as Mistress Olivia Rivers select administrative actions and then press authorize access and then authorize access headmistress's office. Then select unknown user as the person being granted the access. Now you've got access and the next objective will say to search the headmistress's office. Follow the map marker and activating the hand scanner outside the room, the doors will open and you'll want to go and access the headmistress's terminal. Select the option that says from Olivia. Your objective will then change to locate the meeting place and there will be an optional one saying look for clues to the meeting place. Simply leave the underground base and enter the normal area of Riverside Manor. You know, the place with the scorched. Go upstairs and you'll notice there's the two map markers, each one on a terminal. If you head to this study terminal that has a map marker on it and read through the fan mail section, you'll find a message from Kent Connolly, who you will remember from the Silver Shroud quest in Fallout 4. Anyways, for this quest, you'll want to head to the other terminal with the map marker, Olivia's terminal. Select personal journal and select the first entry of available. This will complete the optional objective of looking for clues to the meeting place. So to go to the meeting place, you'll be heading to an area just north of the Pleasant Valley Ski Resort, as you can see here on the map. Here you will find Shannon Rivers and Olivia Rivers, both of them dead, with Olivia's arms around Shannon as they lay on the ground on top of their blood. Your objective will then update to searching both of the bodies. On Shannon's body, you will find Mistress Shannon Rivers' login and Shannon Rivers' recording, which outlines the 
fate of the Order and the betrayal involving Brody. On Shannon, you will also find that unique jewel piece, the Eye of Ra, which as I explained much earlier, makes the garb of mysteries far more potent. On Olivia's body, there's just her dress and some pre-war money. There's even a ruptured hallucinogen gas canister where the conflict took place. Anyways, I don't really want to spoil any more of the quest than is already obvious, but definitely go dig into this quest deeply when you play it. It has been one of the only quests so far in Fallout 76 that has really impressed me. Now, the objective has changed to become a mistress of mystery, so it's time to head back to the base under Riverside Manor. So access the Crypto's terminal and log in as headmistress Shannon Rivers, then select administrative actions and select authorize promotion. Press authorize promotion, mistress of mystery, and then as always, select yourself, unknown user. Then log in as yourself to claim your promotion. You are now a mistress of mystery. You get a special mistress of mystery photo frame and you receive a holotape called Order of Mysteries Rank Mistress, which you can listen to. You have now finished the Mistress of Mystery quest and you will have all the unique gear that this secret order can give you. The Eye of Ra, the Garb of Mysteries, the Voice of Set, the Blade of Bastet, and the ability to make the phantom device. Congratulate yourself on completing the quest, and if you've been watching the video all the way through, I just want to let you know how much I seriously appreciate it. Thank you so much for supporting the channel, and if you think the video deserves it, be sure to give it a like. I hope you thoroughly enjoy this unique gear, and I hope to see a lot more uniques like the Eye of Ra featuring in Fallout 76. Be sure to subscribe for more guides like this, as we'll be making them without a doubt. My name is Michael, social media links can be found in the description, and I look forward to knowing out with you again very soon.